All right, Tex fans, it's round two of today's video spotlight on the new super cards from the folks over at NVIDIA. So like I said previously, you know, Team Green realized that Navi's around the corner. They're releasing a card at $4.99. They couldn't have any competition for their card, so we showed you guys the 2070 Super first. That's right. Uh, this card is uh, $499. Not bad price, right? Now, we're going to be taking a look at the 2060 Super. Now, this card's only $399. Bucks. That's right. 399 smackaroos. That's not bad for this particular card, I don't think. Now, being that this card is a Founders Edition, which is a reference edition from NVIDIA, not a lot will come in the box. Um, not really a lot at all. In this particular card, we're going to get the card. They have a little box here in the back, but there's really nothing in this particular box. You're going to get a couple little user's guide things, and then that's it. There's actually nothing else in the box whatsoever. We'll pull the card out, and that's pretty much all there is is the card and the stuff. Now, taking a look at the card right off the bat, you guys can see it features a two fan design. Once again, it has the name of the card in the front with a nice shiny thing. I made a joke in the last video about, you know, a lot of people said RTX is shiny stuff. Well, now even the card is nice and shiny itself. Now, as far as the other specs go, the RTX 2060 featured 30. So you get four more SM units. As far as the CUDA cores go, we see an increase from the 2060 from 1920 onto the super card of 2176. Now the base clock on the 2060 is 1365 megahertz. The super card is 1470 megahertz. Now this is something that's kind of weird now. The boost clock on the 2060 is actually faster. Not by much, but you guys can see it's actually faster. 1680 versus 1650. That's just kind of strange. Now, as far as tensor flops go, the 2060 has 51.6 and the Super has 57.4. We also see an increase on the texture units. The Super card has 136, where the 2060 standard has 120. The Texel fill rate has also gone up from 201.6 to 224.4 on the Super. Now one big difference between the 2060 and the 2060 Super, however, is the memory interface. The memory interface went from 192 on the 2060 to 256 bit on the Super. This will make a big difference as far as the scoring goes on the card. Now due to the memory interface increase, we're also going to see an increase on the memory bandwidth. From 336.1 gigabytes a second up to 448 gigabytes a second on the Super Card. Now the memory size in the 2060 was also 6 gigabytes and on the Super Card it's 8 gigabytes. The maximum level 1 cache size has gone from 1920 kilobytes to 2176 kilobytes. And we're also seeing an increase in the TDP. The 2060 required 160 watts and the Super requires 175 watts. Now continuing to take a look at the card on the side, you're going to see that there's nothing on here. There's no NV link. There's nothing else, just a bunch of heat fins right here. This is gonna help dissipate that heat out of the card because the shroud completely covers the card. Now, there is a single eight pin connector. It's located on the end. This is pretty much exactly the same as the 2060 card. Um, I really think the only reason that we're really seeing eight gigabytes on these particular cards is just because it sounds better. If you're at a store and you're looking at a card that's you know gonna be money and you see, oh, eight gigabytes versus six gigabytes, you're probably going to buy the eight gigabyte card. And that's probably why Nvidia, you know, changed this card to eight gigabytes. So, you know, good mind for that. Now, on the back of the card, same thing, nice heat shield. Once again, we see the nomenclature. The super card of the 2060. Ah, ah, and there it is on the back. But I do like the shroud though. And being that it's sealed and everything, this actually helps all the heat dissipate from the card since nothing can come out in any weird way. The way the card is designed that all of the heat gets absorbed up and then blown out the card to keep it running nice and cool. Now, on the IO of the card, as far as the connections go, there's a single DVI connector. There's two display ports, a single HDMI and a USB type C port. So that's the card, those are the specs. Real quick, let's check out our test system, then let's check out the benches, and let's see how this card that's coming to market at $399 does. Now the motherboard is the ASUS Maximus 10 Hero, 
We're using an i7 8700K CPU. We've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. We've got an SSD for our boot drive and we've got a Seagate hard drive for our major storage drive. So this thing's ready to rock and roll. We've also got a liquid cooler. We're also running the latest anniversary edition of Windows 10, plus all the latest drivers that were currently available at the time of this review. So now let's rock out to the benchmark song and check out those benchmarks. Now as far as the temps go, there wasn't really too much of a difference between the standard 2060 and the 2060 Super. There was 73 degrees Celsius under full load on the 2060 and 75% and 75 Celsius on the Super, so about 2 degrees. All right, now I have to say that I am pretty impressed with this card at the price level that it's at, at $399, because it definitely beats the 1080, there's no doubt about it. It beats the 1080, that's you know solid thing, it beats it. It also beats 
the 2060. So the 2060 Super, I feel, at $399 is gonna be the definitely, you know, great card in that price range for what's going on. The specs are nice, the performance is nice, having just a single eight pin power connector located on the end, I like that, it's good for building systems for keeping the wires out of the way and all that stuff. So I actually think this card is going to be an editor's choice. Even there's not a lot, you know, technically, you know, advanced on the card, we're just seeing more CUDA cores and everything just being sped up and everything, but still, at the end of the day, we're only seeing two more Celsius of heat compared to the previous generation. The card runs fast. I mean, I know people want me to beat the card up, but I mean, beyond the fact that it's not any great new technology, it is at a good price point. There's more RTX stuff coming out every day, which will mean, you know, the technology will be more viable. Six months from now, the, the complaint that, oh, RTX sucks will be out the window because there'll be so many games that support RTX that it won't matter. It'll be full, you know, mainstream about what's going on. So like usual, if you guys want to get more information about this card or purchase one for yourself we'll have a link down there below you guys can check that out also if you like the music we'll have links to our music down below um, there's lots of ways to support the channel you could try you know trying out that damn amazon prime it's free for 30 days that helps us we also have patreon all that good stuff so if you like what you see sub the channel turn your notifications on and then we'll see you guys back here for more videos on tech of tomorrow peace out have a great day